If you keep up with news from the automotive world, you know large trucks are selling like hotcakes right now. And if you are thinking about large trucks, there is no ignoring a major player like the Chevy Silverado. Pickup trucks are one of my favorite vehicles to review here on Gas Guzzlers, and that is why I'm very excited to take you on a tour of this 2019 Chevy Silverado in the high country trim, coming in at an MSRP of $67,500. $30. Is it worth it? Let's take a look. This video would not have been possible without Kuhn's Chevy Buick GMC of Clarksville. A huge thanks to them for giving us access to this Chevy Silverado. They're an incredibly, incredibly friendly group of folks and we've worked with them for a while. So if you're in the DMV area looking for a new Chevy Buick or GMC, check them out. Their website will be in the description below. I also wanna make a quick apology for not uploading a video last week. We do try and make weekly uploads. Unfortunately, Cole, Colin and I all had a scheduling conflict and we couldn't get together to film a video and none of us had any free time. So we're sorry, but we have a competitor to the Chevy Silverado uh, coming on our channel next week. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Subscribing helps us a lot as a small channel. Thank you to all of you who have liked our videos and subscribed recently. So now we're gonna go to what you came here for. We're gonna start taking a look at this car. Thanks for watching. So as per usual, we're gonna start at the front of this truck and we're gonna work our way around. I'm gonna start by talking about the grill, which was rather controversial when it came out. It had a lot of mixed reviews and I personally had mixed feelings about it. It's not that I dislike this grill. I, I don't think it's ugly, rather, I just think it looks unusual. I feel this way because it does a very good job of blending together all these different stylistic elements and it combines them into one cohesive piece. This is, so what I'm talking about is these two chrome bars here, the air intake, the lights, they don't, they're not separate entities like they are on most other trucks and vehicles. Rather, they're all very well melded together into one entire piece. And I don't know if we're really used to seeing things like that on a vehicle. I think it's a unique look, something we're not used to. And I will say that it has certainly grown on me as I've been looking at it. Other features in the front include these headlights. Uh, they have some fake sort of carbon fibery look in them. I'm not sure what to call it, but they also have this odd S shape and you can kind of see what I mean um, when I say that the front all interacts together. This piece of body right here is almost protruding in on the front fascia. However, it looks like the headlights are stopping it. That's what I mean when I say that it interacts um, and it looks like one cohesive piece. I think it makes for a pretty cool look. In this high country, you do have a body color and chrome bumper, which is something you'd expect at this price point. And then also up top, you have this bulging hood with the six point two liter badge on it. And that clearly shows that this truck packs a punch. It's a very angular bulging design. And uh, we'll get a bit into the powertrain later. Something else that's kind of neat is these air vents right here. Um, we'll try to get some B-roll of it, but there's a, it's real. There, there's nothing, there's a small grate here, but air does flow through this area right here. And I think that's part of what adds such a creative look to the front of this truck. So now we're here at the side of the Silverado. The side of this truck definitely looks quite angular and that's to be expected from a truck. But one thing that is not angular on these new Silverados is the wheel arches. Surely enough, these wheel arches, they're rounded. For those of you that don't remember previous or know, previous generation Silverados had square wheel arches. I guess Chevy uh, got tired of people making fun of their square, square wheel arches and thus we have a more rounded shape now. You all know that here at Gas Guzzlers, we love our body lines. And the Silverado has a few particularly strong body lines. My favorite of which is this one that runs sore from the front and it snakes under the mirror. It makes an interesting crease and I like it. It's a nice contrast to the angular shape of the truck. You also have your high country badge right here. Um, I really like that Chevy put some time into the high country badge. They could have just stamped high country on here, but they made a nice design and I think that was a really nice feature of them. It, you pay a lot of money for this badge. You, you're paying 67 grand. You want people and know that you're driving a nice truck. Um, some other features on the side I kind of like, I like these chrome door handles. I think I like chrome on trucks. Cole personally does not like a lot of chrome on the exterior. I kind of like it. That's complemented by some nice chrome around your windows right here. Now, one thing I do not like about the side of this truck, I folded the mirror here so you can see, is this black plastic. On a black truck, I wouldn't notice it and I wouldn't mind. However, when you're paying 67 grand, this should really be body color or chrome. And it's not just this truck, it's pretty much all Silverados. Here on the side of the Silverado, we're down low now. We're we're gonna take a look at these rims. They're a very nice rim. It's almost like a combination of sort of a matte and chrome silver. I'm not entirely sure how to describe it, but you can see it. It's a very nice looking rim in my opinion. That's matched nicely with this um, white right here. Now this is kind of a mouthful. It is an iridescent pearl 
Tricoat. It is a $995 option. For those of you that have watched some of our other Chevy videos, you know that we are big fans of Chevy rims and Chevy paint colors. I'm not sure why they really just have been killing it recently. Um, some other neat features down here is this running board. You need a running board on a big truck. Uh, at least Chevy makes this look nice. It's chrome, uh, which matches the door handles, the rims nicely. I quite like it. You need a running board. Um, if, if any of you saw our Ford Ranger review, when we were making that, I almost fell out of that truck because I missed the running board. I can't tell you how important these things are. Now we're here at the back of the Silverado. We're gonna talk about the looks of the back first, then jump into the bed. First thing, there's this big Chevrolet sort of stamped across the back. A lot of automakers are starting to bring this back in their trucks. I really like it. This look sort of died out a while ago, but now it's coming back and I totally dig it. Furthermore, you have again your body color bumper down here, something you'd expect at this price point. Some um, uh, other stuff, you have your chrome exhaust. There are these boxy exhausts. They are semi-real, um, a fake tip, but the exhaust, they're not a completely fake tip where it's completely separate from the exhaust system. You do have these nice steps right here. They are nice and large. You can fit a large steel-toed boot in here. So if you have your work boots, you can get in there. And it's very easy to just jump up right here into the truck. So it's a very nice feature to see. The tail lights aren't really doing too much for me. They look a little basic, especially at this price point. Uh, some competitors like the F-150, the tail light wraps around the side a bit more, which I kind of like. Um, but you know, they do the job. And overall, it's a nice looking rear end. So now let's talk a bit about the practicality of the bed. So in terms of the tailgate, this is a powered tailgate, which is a very cool feature. You can see I can drop it with the key. Now, Chevy incorporated some very cool features into this. This doesn't have the cool double fold down tailgate like it's GMC Big Brother. We did make a video on that. Um, this does have a different cool feature though, in the sense that you can close this tailgate with your knee. Now, what am I on about? Why would you close it with your knee? That's what hands are for. Well, think about this. You're coming from a hard day at work, you know, you got some two by fours in the back. You want to carry them out, well now your hands are full. What do you do? You can't close the bed. Simply take your knee, hold it, and up it goes. That is a very cool feature and that is some very clever thinking by Chevy. Great job. So other practicality things to note back here, you have a backup camera, that's to be expected. And next to the backup camera, there's a little another ball that sort of looks like a uh, backup camera, but it's actually an LED light. That could be very useful for hooking up a trailer or just providing luminance back here. Um, speaking of trailers, you do have your tow hitch right here along with your trailer hookups for all your wiring and whatnot. It's very nice that it's nice and accessible right there, not under the truck. Makes it nice and easy and you can tow a lot with this truck. We're going to talk about that a bit more in the powertrain, but now let's get in depth in the bed. So let's talk bed size real quick. This is the short bed coming in at 70 inches. So just under six feet. There is also a standard bed, which is about 10 inches longer, followed by an extended bed, which is about 100 inches long. Chevy leaves plenty of amenities back here for you. You have a household power outlet. You got lots of LED lights everywhere. You also have tons of tie downs. So you have these little rings everywhere, which uh, you know you can sort of tie things down with. There are three levels of them. It's a very practical bed. And you know, if you're a truck guy, you're gonna use that. Uh, also, this does have a spray and bed liner. If you're buying a pickup truck, you know that that is very important. Something else to note back here, there's a camera back here. And we're gonna talk about that when we get inside. And now for one of the most important parts of any truck, the powertrain. The High Country has two engine options. One is a 5.3 liter V8 producing 355 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque. This one here comes with a 6.2 liter V8 producing 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. And it is rated at 16 miles per gallon city and it's gonna give you about 20 highway. This results in a towing capacity of 12 thousand and two hundred pounds and we will have some comparisons on screen for you uh, right now. This engine is mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission sending power to all four wheels. Now we're gonna go take a look inside. Unfortunately Cole and Colin could not make it today so you all are unfortunately stuck with me. So first we're gonna talk about the general interior comfort then I'll move on to the driver's position and then tech and then rear passengers. So just from a general comfort standpoint this truck scores very high in my opinion. The first thing I noticed when I sat down was the seats. They are, you can't see me right now, very comfy. When you sit the uh, but area specifically is very well cushioned. I do like that. Let's talk about the seats a bit. You do have your heated and cooled seats here. They feel quite good. They're quite powerful. Um, I actually really do like the seats in this truck. These are probably the best seats in a truck I've sat in in a while. And you know, trucks tend to have nice seats. 
they have the high country emblem embroidered onto the headrest. That's a very nice feature I like to see. And you see more of this nice leather on your armrest um, in this big center console area. You see more of it on the dash. You see it on your doors. It really is everywhere and I really like that. Um, and it's nicely complemented by this sort of fake wood. It, it's a nice looking fake wood. You can find it on your armrest or on the um, door sills. You find it in your center console area and it really looks nice with the leather and gives this truck a real classy look. Uh, other materials in here, there's a lot of chrome-ish metal in here and that looks quite nice in my opinion. I do like the chrome on trucks as I previously mentioned. Another material that's sort of interesting is this brown plastic going around your center console or um, that's not your center console, your infotainment screen. And I don't really know how I feel about it. I don't know how I feel about that sort of plastic in this level of truck. Uh, I, I'm okay with the chrome plastic. I don't know about this, but it's better than piano black. All right, so here we are in the driver's area of the Silverado in the driver's seat. Again, seats are very comfortable here. Um, what I'm gonna talk about first is the steering wheel. You have, the, uh, the leather here does not feel as nice as the seat. And I would prefer a girthier, larger steering wheel, but this will do. We see more of that sort of brown plastic here. Um, it, it's a nice looking steering wheel, but I do wish for a truck it had a bit more uh, width to it. Now we're going to take a look at some of the controls on here. These controls are pretty easy to use. You have your cruise control heated wheel here. Um, you also have on here, these buttons here control your screen in the middle. So let's talk about this area a bit. You have your tachometer and right next to that you have your speedometer and their physical, um, I actually like the physical gauges there. I do miss those top four gauges being physical. I like the look of that in the previous generation. Silverado now I think about more and uh, I think some other Chevy vehicles have it like the Camaro and I think it's a neat look But you know what it's digital. That's the way things are going these days You have your speed this menu as in most cars is configurable using this right here So you're gonna hit these side buttons and you can see all sorts of good Information and to scroll up and down. I was actually confused when I was first using this system You do not press these arrows here instead you use the scroll wheel right here and scrolling that wheel will move you up and down in this menu. Once I got the hang of it, it is nice and easy to use, no complaints. The system is quite snappy. And um, you also, something I just noticed is in that top right corner, you can see which drive mode you're in. And I believe that right there will show what your speed limit is, that top left white box. Other things in the driver's area, you got your controls right here for what drive mode you're in, sorta. You got your bed light, all that good stuff. Looking over here, we have your center console, and as in most trucks, is absolutely massive. Within it, you have this little light right here. It, it doesn't really do too much, but it doesn't do too much in most vehicles. It's not very bright. Uh, you have your USB ports, auxiliary port, SD card slot, um, you know, your traditional connectivity options. I do like that Chevy includes a little rubberized mat down here, so that's very nice. If we put that down, I also want to show you over here, you have two glove boxes. I like this in a truck. I think it has a lot of practicality, even if this one is incredibly tiny, but I like that it has storage options like that. And something I did not notice when I got in this truck is it has Bose audio. And for those that don't know, Bose is a very high quality speaker company. They make some of the best in the game. So it is very nice to see that. Um, I can't play any music for you, but it, uh, trust me, it does sound quite good. All right, so let's talk comfort and technology. So up here, you do have a sunroof, which is quite nice. It's not panoramic or anything, just a traditional sunroof. And um, yeah, I like it. I have no issue with it. Uh, at this price point, a panoramic might be nice, but I don't know if there's some reason, structural reason maybe that they can't do that since this is a truck. Up here you got your controls for your sunroof, you got your controls for your garage door at home, you have your lights. There's nothing too spectacular about all that. Um, got some basic information there. I don't like when cars do this with just the passenger airbag off. I wish there was a way that it could be better incorporated or look nicer in just that orange light. But that's a lull or probably or something so you know there's not much they can do about it. Now this mirror right here, if you've seen any other GM video, probably you probably know where this is going. Traditional mirror, right? You can see me, hello. But if we pull this right here, it switches to that camera in the back. And the benefit of this is if you have anything in the back of your truck, it's not gonna be obstructing your view. And that's a really nice feature to have. And it's very high definition. Um, it's hard to tell that it's a screen, not a mirror you're looking at. Very cool feature. I hope more car brands start picking up this feature. 
Now let's move down to your infotainment. If you've seen any of our other Chevy GM videos or really anyone else's, this system will look familiar to you. You can see it is very snappy. I have no complaints about this system. I like it very much. It reminds me of a lot of, phone, a, lot of a phone. Um, you'll hear a lot of car reviewers saying they wish that car infotainment systems were more like phones. Well, this is it. It's very snappy. It's very simple. I can tell what is what. There's no confusion here. Um, I like it. Uh, this car does have the Wi-Fi hotspot, but those are ridiculously expensive every month to use. Uh, a very good system by GM. You do have your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I really have no complaints about this system here. Now moving down, you have some physical gauges, some physical buttons, and these are your climate controls right here. I do like how they light up, and I like how they you can see the numbers change in here. They, they're screens actually in the center of these dials. I do quite like that. A lot of Chevys do this. It is an awesome feature. I really like it. Down here you have physical buttons for your heated and cooled seats. I really like that so that as soon as you get in you can just press it and your heated or cooled seat is right on. That is an awesome feature. And then down here you have your, you know, all your different sort of switch gear. I really like how these switches look. A lot of trucks and vehicles are doing this now. I remember the Ram has something similar. You can, you know, they they feel very good to press. Uh, I hope more trucks start doing this. You have your power outlets down here. You have a lot of connectivity options. You have USB-C, USB-A. You got your regular chargers down here. That Oh, sorry. Your regular chargers that you would expect to see in a car. So that is very nice to see. And then you also have wireless charging down here. So this truck really does have it all. You have your trailer controls right next to that. And overall, yeah, in terms of tech, this car really has it. One other tech feature I wanted to point out is the camera system. So if you pop the car in reverse, it's automatically going to come up. You can see right here we have our rear view along with our 360 and my tripod that fell over in the back. Um, but you can see you can get a variety of different views here around the truck. And this one kind of is glitchy and weird. I think they were going for that sort of 360 drone look like some BMWs have and whatnot. Um, but it doesn't really work out so well as you can see but they do have plenty of useful camera modes. That's your front right there. Um, overall, you know, truck, you'd expect a truck of this size to have this stuff, but it still impresses me. Another feature that I forgot to mention that's part of the technology package, which is uh, about $1,600, is that right there, your heads up display, it is controlled from this menu right here. And in the current configuration, you can see we have the speed and your lane position in there. It's a very clear heads up display and I quite like it. And before we move on to a review of the back, I just want to point out that this truck has a very nice interior. I feel that this might be one of the better in the class. Um, the Ram is definitely a close competitor, but in terms of interior, this kind of blows away the F-150 in my opinion. Um, it's really well designed. I really like the look of it. How just the way it has certain angles around those air vents, the way they're outlined in the chrome and then the brown and the leather. The whole look together really works, and I think this is a very nice looking interior. Okay, so now we're here in the rear of the Silverado. First, uh, I wanna mention something I forgot to mention in the front, and it would be criminal for me not to. This truck comes with very nice rubberized floor mats. Truck people are gonna need those. You don't wanna get dirt, and you don't wanna mess up your nice truck, so it's very nice that they include those from the factory. You're gonna buy them anyways, so it's nice that they just come right from the place. So let's talk about your rear passenger amenities first, and then, um, We'll talk about some storage and some other stuff. So first of all, just general comfort, actually. The seats are very nice. Uh, they're very large. This is where I would sit as a passenger. I sit a bit further back as a passenger than I do as a driver, and I have no problem sitting here. I'm six feet tall, and I am having a lovely time just sitting here, having the time of my life sitting back here in this Silverado, and really no complaints about headroom either. There's a sort of bump that goes up and if it's plant you have tons of headroom i mean it's insane even the mill passenger has plenty of headroom and the mill passenger the seat here is plenty wide uh, you could fit three of me side by side by side and wouldn't have a problem there is a small transmission tunnel here but it's nothing that bad or, or a driveline tunnel i guess in this case it's not that bad though really i'm completely fine now the leather back here the seats they're very soft they feel great to sit in and let's talk about some of your other comfort features. You do have heated seats for your outboard passengers. You have three levels of those. They're controlled by physical buttons right here in the center. 
Now, below that, you have your USB-C, USB-A, and regular cigarette charger, which is nice, but I would like to see a household outlet there uh, at some point in the future. Now, you also have two sort of, you have your two um, air vents back here, which is something very nice. That's something you expect at a higher trim level. You want air vents for your back passengers. You also have two cup holders right here. I would like a third cup holder because you do have three passengers. If you're sitting here, actually, you can fold this down to get two more cup holders, but then you can't have three passengers. This does, it's, this yells quality to me. This, the, you can see it, it makes a shaking when it comes down. That's how it attaches. There's some sort of spring mechanism in here. It really locks it down. You can see it's hard for me to jiggle it around. It's not some piece of junk. You also have your window back here, your sliding window, which is power. So that's nice to see at this price level. Again, the good materials from the front continue back here with that interesting design I was praising. You have your chrome, your wood, your leather, all together. That, that's sort of the holy trinity of car materials, right? Uh, wood, leather, and metal. Seeing all three of those together in a truck is very nice. Overall, the passenger experience back here is great. Something else I wanna mention real quick before we tie this video up is just that the seats here have this neat little storage cubby right here um, and that is a very neat feature a lot of cars are starting to have features like this uh, hidden cubby and I really like that car makers are getting really creative and now is a great time to be a car fan it makes me so excited so that's it for this review of the 2019 Chevy Silverado in the high country trim for $67,000 you are getting a lot we hope you enjoyed this video and I really like this truck. We'll try to do some more Chevy soon. We have a, a competitor of this truck coming up. If you like this video, please subscribe. It does us a huge favor. We have a lot of cool videos coming out and we wanna do a lot of cool stuff this summer. So please subscribe for that. Also, if you like this video, like it. If you dislike it, tell us why you dislike it. We're gonna to try to fix stuff in the future. We're getting better at this, right? Again, a huge thanks to Coon Chevy of Clarksville, especially Eric. They are such nice, helpful people. We've worked with them a lot, and I really can personally recommend them at this point. We'll see you all in the next video next week, and have an awesome week.